in the not so distant past, what was considered progress oftentimes came at the devastating cost to our natural world. Here in Nigeria, for instance, it is estimated that as much as 76% of its original forest cover has been lost as a result of de deforestation and other things. But efforts are now being made to reverse the situation and the Nigerian Conservation Foundation is engaging politicians in the process. One of our eco-reporters met with the Foundation's Director of Technical Programs, Joseph Onoja. Green Recovery Nigeria is basically to regreen Nigeria from the less than 10% forest cover that we have to up to 25% at least as recommended by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. The pillars of Green Recovery Nigeria involves afforestation, reforestation and proper forest management and that involves our protected areas. We must properly manage it. We are also um, working to ensure that um, while population is exploding, people are living in harmony with nature without destroying nature. So people live intertwined with nature. For instance, the farmers that we work with, instead of having an extensive agriculture, they will have intensive agriculture where whatever, because of the climate smart agriculture that we are working with them through farmer feed school and other intervention, they are able to have intensive agriculture where some of the um, forest products are being domesticated and they don't have to go into the forest to get some of these. So we do it sustainably and they go into the forest to harvest non-timber forest products uh, very sustainably. Rebreeding Nigeria is ensuring that the degraded area we have what we call enrichment planting. The areas that have been degraded will be planted back, and the, so that by the time you protect it, it will it will also have natural regeneration, and that is what we are selling because nature will always take care of itself. So once you protect an area, it is natural that it bounces back. It needs some intervention here and there, but once you protect an area, it will come back, and especially because it has life in it. We will be sure to follow development as that story progresses. Now we head north to Europe, to Germany, to see how a business is mining for gold using a thoroughly modern method. It is said that over 40 million tons of e-waste is generated globally every year. But those towering heaps of techno trash conceal a nearly endless reserve of precious metals. Let's go see this. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Dominic Lochmann runs a business that deals in precious metals. The entrepreneur buys up old computer circuit boards. Contained within the thousands of discarded electronic parts, he mines for copper, silver and gold. The processors are the most valuable thing in electronic waste. A full dumpster may contain about 60,000 euros worth of precious metals. The waste comes from Germany and its neighboring countries. Dominic Lochmann maintains close contact with his suppliers. To ensure profitability, 
he needs large quantities of electronic waste. Each of the electronic components contains just a couple of milligrams of precious metal. That means you have to recycle tons of e-waste to get any worthwhile amount of silver, gold or palladium. One of his business partners is the firm CR Recycling. It specializes in recycling electronics in an environmentally friendly fashion. Germany has very strict standards for this. The first step is to sort the scrap. Plastic, sheet metal, cables. Almost all of it can be separated and recycled. It's the higher quality electronic devices, such as mobile phones and computers, however, that are the real gold mine. This is your typical computer motherboard. The battery has to be taken out so that nothing happens during the shredding or smelting process. We're then looking at about one euro 50 per kilo, is that right, Mr. Hasenmeier? That's about right. Here we have a good plug-in board with nice gold-plated parts and without any contaminants. Here we're looking at about two euros 80 per kilo. That's why it's cost-effective for the company to dismantle the computers by hand. Cables, housings and circuit boards are carefully sorted. Old tube televisions and monitors are less valuable, even though the shielded cables are full of copper wire. But they also contain toxic elements such as lead and cadmium. In Germany, these must be disposed of properly, so they don't end up in the drinking water. Small shredders are used specifically for hard drives that contain data that customers want destroyed. Specialized facilities take care of the masses of material. Later, copper smelters separate the metal fragments and melt down the shredded material. It's a global market. That's why the disassembly can be done worldwide, as well as the flow of materials and the processing. Dominic Lochmann carefully inspects the incoming goods. He pays suppliers by the weight of the delivery and the current price of raw materials. His trading partners can check the company website for updates on quality and prices. And there's no end to the supply. More than 40 million tons of e-waste are generated every year. Recycling it doesn't only save money, it helps protect the environment and preserve natural resources.